are living the authentic life and I was going to introduce this fabulous woman as Alicia Canoli, but it is not. Mm -hmm. It is Elise Canoli. 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 And me being Danae right. Cromosta, some of my best friends call me Donae. Mm -hmm. Right. And it is hard and then it you is. know people for so long yep. it's hard to say. That's yeah. not my name. And so you just accept whatever you just people accept. say. <laughs> and honestly, it gets really um, entertaining, the creative variations that yes. come up. <laughs> Creativity. <laughs> it is. Uh, my favorite is Electra. Ooh. Electra. Electra. That sounds like an alter ego. It is. But my alter ego is Renee. She has a lot more fun than today. Because <laughs> when I was... Um, uh, announced as a new freshman high school cheerleader uh -huh. back in, I guess, 1988. <clears throat> they announced over the loudspeaker at the high school, Elsie Anderson. So I'll take Electra over Elsie for <laughs> sure. But it is Elise, and uh, but I'll answer to anything. Well, you have worn a number of hats, so mm -hmm. you could have a name for all the hats you've mm -hmm. worn. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were saying. I hate it when we start talking before the video runs because right. I love when I get someone's bio and we are recently new friends, mm -hmm. but we've had some really, as I say, we go deep quick. Right. It's our right. personalities to do that. Like, right. Tell me about you and what has defined you and what's made you who you are. And so you've had this journey. Of course, the hat we wear with the most pride is mom. Of course. And we love being wives to our fabulous husbands. Mm -hmm. I always mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, and then, um, entrepreneur, right. always growing, creatives, trying new things. And you were sharing earlier. So mm -hmm. I read that you, during COVID, right. carried through a successful business you created with gaming and teaching kids teaching how to code. Kids, and robotics. And so it starts with the fun gaming side, but really you're getting into all this technical. Right. Well, it started, it. it started as teaching kids how to code. Which is just, and I thought, Danae, code? I, I thought, oh, everybody's going to be signing, line, it's lining up along the sidewalk to get in my door. And it's right here in the middle of Tanglewood. And we opened and there were like four people there. And I thought, oh no, oh no. So then... I realized I needed to pivot mm -hmm. instead of focusing on teaching kids how to code because a lot of our peer group doesn't even know what coding is. Right. Yes. So therefore they didn't realize it was a skill set that, that they their, needed. their children needed. Yes. And so I thought, you know what? Actually, kids love Minecraft. Yes. So instead, we're going to turn into a strategic game building place where technology you teach kids how to be producers of technology instead of just consumers you also have a place in which they come one to two hours a week it's safe there are all sorts of boundaries so they don't wander into rabbit holes that are places we never want them to see mm -hmm. and then you pick them up and you take them home and they play outside climb fences play baseball ride a bike or whatever so that was my whole goal is to give people families access to technology in a healthy place that didn't mean that they were just mindlessly using for hours on end, which we know is so much the case at home or even at school on their on their phones. So was this a summer? It was year round. Okay. And it, how much time would they spend with you? One to two hours a week. Okay. And how many kids really wanted to raise their hands to be on a computer not doing surfing of their own? Uh, well, you know, we, we had, I had a really great team and, you know, I'm sure uh, what I learned also is when I interviewed people to work for me, they were young. They were usually okay. between the ages of 15 to 24. Oh. And I'd say, tell me what you know and tell me what you love. Mm -hmm. And that's how we started out our interviews. And they'd tell me, and if I liked them, I'd say, great, that's what you're going to teach. Oh. So then they had re relatability to the kids that were coming because they used to be those kids. Exactly. And it is, um, we have, well, you have 
four kids, mm-hmm. but we know each other through our girls who both love math. Right, right. Which is a little unusual for girls to be in STEM, but coming from a mom that wanted right to know Cody, yeah. I presume that that was something you were doing at home with the kids no. too. So, or you know, not even I, really? I do not know how to code, but you know what? As a mother. My oldest is 23 now, a graduate of your alma mater, A&M, uh-huh. and in graduate school now. But when she was in the sixth grade, which was many years ago, I was watching her in a classroom in our neighborhood middle school, very bored. And I thought, I- I'm all of my younger career prior to my Code Ninjas was uh, a volunteer in our schools here in Houston ISD and then at the district level advocating for rigor in the classroom because I didn't think there was enough. And so that's why I ultimately opened this because I wish that this was being taught in the schools. That is where, that gives me chills. So of all my research Mm -hmm. of people creating successful business ventures and coming alive in their careers, Mm -hmm. people have found something they believed in mm-hmm. with their heart and were super passionate about very that fulfilled a need in the community correct and they could fill it yep. because it wasn't just i love this and it's fun right it's people want a part of this and i know i needed it and maybe didn't even know i needed right, it. right right so what if i could educate others right and how brilliant on your part to say i know how to run a business but I don't know coding, so how do I find someone? So I just found those special gems. That's amazing, and how did you even? uh, Word of mouth. Okay, and that's that's a great, powerful tool. We just have had some changes in our personnel, and it's been hard to figure out if you should go to LinkedIn or Mm -hmm, Indeed, mm -hmm, or. mm -hmm. but the first way I always start is by sharing with friends and asking. And I'd I'd also email the uh, heads of the math departments of some of, the, of our local high schools. Oh, brilliant. That I had a lot of respect for and they would make recommendations. And I had, because I, I wanted to hire young people who would be role models for our kids. And they do relate more to their peers right. than they do to yep. an adult teaching mm-hmm. them. And I also believed that learning should not be punitive. Learning can be fun. Mm-hmm. And when learning is fun, magic happens. Absolutely. So that was the the culture that we cultivated there. And how did you continue it through COVID? Well, that's a really great story because we opened the beginning of 2019. And finally, in January of 2020, I was breaking even. Wow. It so takes it, a while. It took a while. It's an investment And I had, you time. know, raised the, our profile and people realized, oh, Elise is running that. We can trust Elise. And I, all all the parts were coming together. And then late January, my husband said, Elise, you know, there's this thing circulating in China. I think you need to come up with an option in case we have to shut our doors down. Wow. And I said, are you kidding me? He said, Elise, I just think you need to have a plan B. I said, Evan, I'm working on plan A and right, right now it's going well. And he said, I just, and he nagged me about it wow. every day. And then finally, mid-February, I told one of the guys who works for me, who was a college graduate, I said, John, I would like for you to set us up with systems just in case for, for a week yeah. or two, we have to close. He said, no, okay. Uh, he said, no problem. As soon as he set us up, a whole team on Slack. I've never used Slack before. Created Zoom accounts. I'd never used Zoom before. Created uh, Airtable platforms, et cetera. And I created a curriculum using Minecraft. And I said, you know, just in case. Well, sure enough, if the world didn't turn upside down in such a short time <laughs> that it was literally the Thursday before spring break, that here in Texas, everything closed by Saturday. So oh, yes. we, but we already had everything in place. Incredible. So the following week, that Monday after spring break, I sent out an email to the hundred plus families that are enrolled in our program. I said, good morning. We now have class online. So Danae, we, and I had young people working for me who are digital natives. 
Right. So they were comfortable. <laughs> totally they comfortable. They weren't freaking out where no. all the rest of us were yeah. like, what no. are we doing? So, today, but, so then I lost wow, I, about chills for you. 50% of my enrollment within about mm. three weeks because people were frazzled. They didn't know, you know, it, it, who knew it was going to happen yet. Then I gained equally that much, if, but actually many more because now parents are calling me saying, Elise, I always wanted to have my child participate in your program, but I didn't want to make the drive oh. from Bel Air or wherever. And then I started getting calls saying, well, my cut, my sister's son would like to enroll. He lives in New York City. Wow. <laughs> Today, we all of a sudden had a second business in the cloud. Wow. And wow. we were running about 25 classes a week with these kids logging in because after a few weeks, the schools quit. The teachers, oh, yes. The teachers didn't know the how to do. They were bored. They, they were bored. Connection. It was they awful. They needed something for their brain. They so, wanted excitement. The, 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 so many of the schools literally, we, I'm sorry, we, can't we just can't. It. We can't right. do it. So at least became the de facto school. Right. It was incredible. It but was at your the same outlier time, moment. At the same time, by the, I was exhausted by the time we finally sold at the end of 2022 because Denae, I would never had a COVID break. Right. So when all my friends were, we're saying, like, relax, yeah, we're ready bike to riding yeah. for a few hours a day and we're curled up watching movies on the couch. I'm literally supervising all of these classes because I, as a owner felt personally responsible mm -hmm. not only for the caliber of what was going on but just for the safety mm -hmm. um to make sure that my instructors were in line and it also the kids too you know because things can happen things can happen with videos yeah. and not being present yeah and not yeah so i i by the by the time we sold i um it was my, I took that next spring, which mm -hmm. is when we, this new venture happened. Mm -hmm. And I called it my COVID spring. And that was 2023. Wow. So did someone find you? Support uh, you? For buying it? Yes. We used a broker. And, okay. and I, because I didn't know, we, we put it on the market in September of 2022. I didn't know if it would take six weeks, six months or six years. Sure. No idea. Mm -hmm. And today, the perfect buyer showed up. Wow. Paying cash and wanting to close before the end of the year. Incredible. <laughs> Was that your goal when you started it? <laughs> well, yes, too. Ultimately, no, actually, our goal was to uh, develop this whole multi center business of having at least five franchises. Okay. But as we talked about before, I learned the hard way because we did have a second location. We opened two at one time, one in Pearland, one in Tanglewood. The second one failed. The market couldn't sustain it in that it demographic. Just, I guess. That. And it, we were shocked. We were shocked because we thought, well, it's Pearland. Mm -hmm. um, they're so hyper about education down there. Mm -hmm. A lot of two income families, blah, blah, blah. No. And so I, so I have humility for entrepreneurship and that I know what it's like to succeed and I know what it's like to fail. Well, some of the best ideas just aren't packaged in a way that the Are right scalable. people, right? The right people hear it. Right. So the marketing isn't there yep. or that there's difficulty in managing right. with it being in right. your area right. and Tanglewood, right. you knew it and lived it. Right. So to have it in another location. Right is really challenging. Yeah, and it's not that I didn't have a skilled uh, team down there, because I did. It just didn't work. And so, I think that that, that happens. It and happens. even the best, well, we know each other through mm -hmm. fashion, but right. even the best fashion designers sometimes right. aren't able to sell yep. their pieces because yep. of different challenges mm -hmm. that they go through. Right. So how, what then was the catalyst for you to begin styling and to take this to another level well, as I, a business yeah, and I, not just a passion. Right. Well, I, I've always, I think I've always, I've always enjoyed clothes, et cetera. And I've always loved that. And, but, you know, particularly when I was working at Code Ninjas on a regular, on a daily basis, I mm -hmm. felt like it was uh, out of respect for myself, but also for the people paying to bring mm -hmm. their children to me 
that I, I'm going to look nice every mm-hmm. day because that's just respect. And then, um, so which is old fashioned, it is old fashioned and yes. I, I'm kind of old fashioned. I am too. Um, I just, my mother dressed every day yeah. and her, she was, her work was taking care of the house exactly. and the family and her handbag matched right. her shoes, matched her belt and she had her lipstick on. And guess what? She was <laughs> that Nancy wore a sincere smile as a result. She did. She did. Sincere, sincere mm-hmm. smile. So then I, when I was on my COVID spring in 2023, mm-hmm. uh, I had already made plans to go to Paris with my sister and two mm-hmm. friends of hers who were going for the big interior design show. Mm-hmm. So I was just going for fun. And because um, I'd taken my girls summer of 2021 mm-hmm. for the first time, and I hadn't been there in many years. But um, so they're all there for the interior design mm-hmm. activities. And at dinner, They'd say, Elise, why don't you do something in fashion? And I said, well, what would that be? And one of them said, well, my sister pays someone to come to her house and put all her outfits together, style her for trip, et cetera. I said, oh, well, that, I mean, I can do that. And I said, but how would I go about doing that? And they said, why don't you start taking pictures and posting to Instagram? Uh-huh. I said, oh, okay. So it, literally we started doing that while we were on the trip. And I start getting these messages. Hey, Elise, can I hire you to come help me? And so that's where it all started. Wow. That's where Talk it all about started. about organic, natural evolution. It was very, evolution. it was, it was. And I tell you what, today it's been, it's so much fun. And the friendships that have come about as a result of doing this mm-hmm. are beyond they, they bring me so much joy and I, I when we were talking the other day i mentioned that phrase that i learned from somebody I respect she said you know elise i think what you're doing in your living is the the saying be yourself so those looking for you can find you oh yes i love that and i tell you what that i that i think about that multiple times a day mm-hmm. because i think Truly, that is what has happened in the last 19, 20 months since this started. It's just, and in, so I highly recommend. <laughs> well, but I think also it, um, I've met really fashionable women mm-hmm. that know how to pack their bags. Mm-hmm. But when they go to someone else's closet, mm-hmm. who's not their same height, right, and right. frame, right. and right. They struggle with how they give that woman. It's yeah. sort of like an interior designer right. having a, a style. Yep. Whereas if she goes into a place that's asking for contemporary when yep. she's traditional, it's difficult. But you seem to cross over. I do. I love it. That I, I, you can work with a wardrobe as right. opposed to saying, this is what you need to buy. Yep, yep. No, I, so let's I talk really about that because I think that's kind of your specialty. Yeah, my thing. I was talking to a friend of mine, well, a new friend who worked in fashion, in corporate mm-hmm. fashion for mm-hmm. 25, 30 mm-hmm. years. And um, I was talking to, we were just brainstorming mm-hmm. kind of how do I describe what I do? And I, I said, you know, I feel like I'm a puzzle solver. Mm. I like to go into people's closets and help them solve puzzles that they feel like they don't have the pieces for. Because in just about every situation, the puzzle, the pieces are all there. Mm-hmm. They just hadn't realized the way you could put them together. So interesting. And do you feel like it's, what are, what are your influences? You've traveled a lot. I, you grew up with a very fashionable mom. Yeah, she's always, she's been sewing. She makes all of her own clothes. Oh, that's right, because the, yep. um, Marie's learning to yep, sew. Yeah, Marie's learning, she's teaching Marie how to sew. Um, you know, I think, I, I, and I have, I have, I think global is a good um, description and that I'm curious about other cultures Mm -hmm. and people from other cultures Mm -hmm. who are here in Houston. And so they, they've been a big influence, particularly in the last 18, 20 months, Mm -hmm. they've been a big influence on me. And then I think also just being a few weeks from turning 51 Mm -hmm. gives, has given me the last few years, a lot of courage to just be real. 
Yes. And I remember a friend of mine last year, she who's known me for a long time since our girls, older girls were in kindergarten. And when she heard what I was doing, she said, well, at least how, what do you read? How do you keep up with trends? And I said, mm, yeah, I said, oh, that's a good question. I have I can't remember the last time I bought a magazine, okay. much less had a subscription to a fashion magazine. I said, because I have no idea what's in style right now. I, I could not tell you what is trendy because mm-hmm. that's not my style. Mm-hmm. Um, my attitude is, you know, if you chase trends, your wardrobe is going to be a, have a short shelf life. Yes. And it's going to be hard to transition from year to year and from place to place because yeah. we are in real life. Right. You're not walking a runway. No, no. And I was cracking up. I don't know if you watch. I think it's Carla Rath. It starts. Oh, Rockmore. Yes. Yes. In Dallas the uh-huh. other day, somehow she popped up on my feet and she was yeah. like me trying on my winter wear when I live in Dallas and right. it's still 95 degrees outside. Oh gosh. Or hotter. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. Because we have these ideas mm-hmm. and like Mm-mm. when you see these sweater trends, you're yeah. like, uh, not yet. Even in Colorado, <laughs> right. I feel like it's so hot in restaurants. I yeah, yeah. I'm not a sweater oh, lover. Right. I'm a layer person. Truly, you have but- to be. Because our weather is too unpredictable, which also is, I, I am a big believer of there are no rules mm-hmm. anymore, <laughs> particularly because our weather is unpredictable and our fall transition just keeps getting longer. Yes keeps getting longer and our winter is getting shorter so um anyway i my my so regarding shopping your closet Mm -hmm. is really my theme Mm -hmm. and then of course we'll it'll i'll we'll make a list okay it would make sense if you found a great gold bag that would help tie things around and blah blah Mm -hmm. blah you if you had red patent leather shoes that you could wear blah blah blah. We'll, we'll make that list but i'm really not a personal shopper right because um, I like working with things that people have already chosen mm-hmm. because that's their personality. I don't want to push my personality and my style on somebody, mm-hmm. just like you were saying. I have, like, for instance, yesterday I have a friend who's an incredible top ranked musician here in Houston. She's a size extra large. Mm-hmm. I called her yesterday. She's doing a concert in Marfa mm-hmm. later oh, this fun. month. And I said, um, I think I found a great dress for you. And it, you know, it, it'll be like X, XL. Mm-hmm. And I sent her a picture, only because I, 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 I was just excited to show her. I, I don't, I'm not, I have no skin in the game. I'm not making a commission on it at all. Mm-hmm. But I love the designer and I love this performer. Mm-hmm. And I said, I think the two of you connecting would be just magic. And she replied back, I love it. So we're going to get it tomorrow and have her try it on. So yeah. I, I, I do not just have a client that's a size two, five feet eight, and less than 40 years old by any stretch. My youngest has been about 18 years old and the oldest was 75. Oh, I love that. And there are some things. So what I tell people when they come in to make a purchase from us, Mm -hmm. being vintage classic, they'll say, what is one of the things they should have in their closet? Amen. and I'll say, and we kind of talked about this. Yeah. I think a classic Chanel bag. Right, right. Because girls that are 16 yeah. to women who are 80 right. both want to wear them. Amen. And you could wear them with uh, jeans Truly. and flats or Love with it. something super dressy. So I think there are things that transcend mm-hmm. age and time. And and those are the best purchases. And style. And that's where I'll t- recommend, and I do this with myself, and I would recommend it to anybody. That's where you put the investment yes. piece. That's, that's an investment piece that is timeless, mm-hmm. that you will wear for generations in your own life, and then will be fought over by your daughters yes. someday because they want to keep wearing it. And so that those... They're so special. They're so special. And, and, you know, it's supposed to be that way. So tell us a little bit. um, I was blessed to purchase my dream Nantucket bag. Mm -hmm. I'm always... So I learned that in Nantucket, the whalers would go out and Mm -hmm. they would take these... um, I guess, what is is the basket made of? It's... um, 
I couldn't tell you exactly. I would, but they would take guessing. out the pieces, mm -hmm. and when they were out whaling, they would create these baskets, bring it back, give yeah. it to the woman. So this has been going yeah. on for hundreds of years, hundreds of yep. years, and they actually date the inside. Mm -hmm. And you are working with the family mm -hmm. who. Mm -hmm. um, the woman, will yeah. you tell the story? Oh, sure. Well, she was a best friend of my grandmother's, very close friend, mm -hmm. and and outlived all of her friends. So she just passed away at 96 this wow. year. And so my mom was talking to the daughters who are in their 70s. They're my mm -hmm. mom's age. And she said, you know, and Bertha loved, she was your mom. Mm -hmm. She loved to dress. And... Uh, so my mom told the daughters, why don't you have Elise come up and go through B's closet? And so she can pull anything that she thinks you guys would, should keep mm -hmm. before you have the estate seller come take the rest of it. So I drove up to Fort Worth, which is where I'm from. And in my Tahoe, not expecting anything other than just dividing mm -hmm. good just pieces, helping them, helping them organize. Uh, and so... I start going through Bertha's closet, literally her closet. She's almost 100 years old. And I'm pulling these pieces like YSL, Oscar de la Renta, size zero, size two, that obviously were from when she was wearing them in the 60s, Still in the 70s. keeping them. Some of them in their original bag. And then her handbags and belts that she wore. But this is all mixed with Chico's. You know, I mean, and so because you age and your bodies change and if particularly if you live long enough, you might be in a wheelchair by then and you have okay. extra girth. So anyway, but I had so much fun pulling from her closet and being so excited around the, her daughters. I'd say, girls, can you believe what I just found in here? It's so exciting. So ultimately I said, you know, this doesn't make sense for us to give to a reseller to sell. Why don't I sell it mm -hmm. for you guys? And um, so that's what I've been doing. It's been it, the the most fun has been getting to walk in her shoes. Yes, literally, and just imagine because that's what I think is so special about vintage is you get to really live somebody else's live a fairy tale that you make up about the piece that you're now buying that has a history to it. And then the fact that you knew her. And that we know her. Mm -hmm. And um, and she loved to water ski. I have her fly fishing vest. She hunted. She, she, was, she a, was a Texas she was woman. A, she was a real Texas jewel. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's just been, it's been a real honor. It's so fun. And so the girls had an interest in a few pieces, but they were not other, you know, totally they, they, connected. No, because they have a more, they have a more casual lifestyle mm -hmm. in uh, comparison to the way their mom chose. And um, so they said, you know, why don't you just sell this for us? I said, okay. And one of my favorite pieces was a Loewe leather trench coat. Trench coat. That I is know. Absolutely incredible. And then it, Yves Saint Laurent, yeah. but it looked like it was a tooled leather, but right. it actually it's was. A, it's like a like a satin brocade blazer. And it's so it's lighter weight right. and easier to wear. It's and, so pretty. And it just, and then a crushed velvet. Yeah. Uh, just really. Oh, Adolfo. Yes. Oh, that silver. It's just so fabulous. It's a size six. So it needs, it needs a somebody who's going to just love it. Yes. It's fantastic. So anyway, but the whole, that that's why I love vintage too, is because the history behind all mm -hmm. the pieces and, you know, back then when those designers were creating and, and what you sell, there, there was no internet. There was no unlimited quantity of stuff in fast fashion. Mm -hmm. So you bought fewer, just like the French, you know, you like in the, like if you're buying an old house, even today, Guess where they have very small closets? Yes. There were no walk-in closets. There were, there was a small door, you know, with a hanging rod at best. And in the even older, you had an armoire. Yes. And it all had to fit in there. And guess what? They look no less fashionable then than I any know. of us do now. It's crazy. I was so. lucky to take over a room and mm. I 
love how you've or no, you've seen grown mine is, a little bit. Yeah. And but it's great because tell them about sort of the way that you created this additional room because mm-hmm. I think it's also great for women as we are getting more space in the yeah. house. Yeah. Um, that we can spread our wings a little bit. Well, well, <laughs> this the second story came about because uh, to my surprise, I realized I was pregnant 10 years after our third daughter, after Marie. And so I had our favorite son, only son, little guy, <laughs> who is just turned eight. And so we needed a little more space. So we built that second story and it has a large bedroom upstairs, which my oldest daughter uses when she's back and forth home from graduate mm-hmm. school. Um, but my mom had the idea. She said, at least what if you put two rolling racks up there? So therefore you have more room and you can make that your little atelier and that's where you play. And literally, I can't wait to go upstairs every day and play. It's to get so dressed. inspiring. And the artwork you had that you collected from places around the world that have different meanings to me. <laughs> to you. And but the stacking and the layering, mm. it's just um it really inspired me. We have a puzzle room where I mm-hmm. keep all of my orange boxes and black boxes. And, but I'm gonna get a rolling rack in there eventually. And yeah. I need to figure out how to hang my hats and all that. Truly, it's so much fun. You know, because I also have always um, subscribed to the theory that if you see it, you'll use it. Yes. If it is in drawers and behind big doors, you, know, you, you just forget you have it. You do, and you forget to incorporate it. Yeah. And what I loved um, when you can look at all your textures and fabrics mm-hmm. and colors is um, I walked in and you had told me about this special piece that had caught your eye Mm -hmm. in New York when Mm -hmm. you had walked Mm -hmm. past the Mm -hmm. window. Mm -hmm. And I walked in and of course that was immediately where my eye was drawn was to that fabric. So you do sometimes spend on great pieces that are investments. So tell a little bit about the high-low and how you decide that journey. You know, I, uh, I, well, I do my best to find really special pieces twice loved Mm -hmm. Um, because for one they're unique the quality is fantastic sometimes the price point is lower Um, I know I'm not gonna have a twin Mm -hmm. and then also I so and then you know I will on occasion go to Zara and get sleeveless t-shirts or Mm -hmm. a few things like that uh, but I have, I am a big fan of mixing and matching and I, and then I will, particularly if I'm traveling, I will find a small designer and I'll start collecting. So I'm, I'm a big fan now of collecting versus just consuming sort of mm-hmm. like when I was mm-hmm. teaching kids how to code, I wanted you to be, um, a producer Mm -hmm. versus just a consumer. Now I want to be a collector. Oh, I love that. Versus just an accumulator. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and and I buy, so now I'm very discerning what I buy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean, occasionally I'll buy an expensive piece just because uh, it's very unique and I'm, it's such a small batch quantity. And I remind my mother-in-law of this who now has pretty severe memory loss and I'll say Marilyn you may not remember this but you know you used to tell me Elise if you see something you really like you should probably just go ahead and get it (laughs) because it may not be there next time and it (laughs) really may not be there when you need it and so I would just say just get it And she'll say, she is my kind of girl. I know. She'll say, oh, did I say that? I'll say, you did. You did. You told many me times, that. Many times, many times. So, um, and then I, I, I really wear my clothes. Mm-hmm. I wear all my clothes. So you'll, I mean, if you follow me, you'll say, you'll see like some common threads, but I, I really, I keep, in spite of, I mean, everything's relative, but I think yes. my collection is, it's, I really do wear what I have. Mm-hmm. And I don't dry clean it very, like, rarely. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very 
careful with the way I wash it so that it's last. Because I want things that are going to last. Yes. And then I just mix them up. Any of your girls borrowing your pieces? All the time. And I just have to kind of... Mm-hmm. <laughs> with some of the pieces that they take, but we're all the same size, same shoe size, everything. So, well, I have a great story with a very sad ending. Mm-hmm. Bella borrowed my mm. uh, wedding shoes for prom. Oh, oh, oh. And the boy's oh. mom took them and I forgot to get them back and now they're missing. Oh, darn it. Sorry. <laughs> so sometimes that happens. But yeah. I love that they had two lives. They and did. I wouldn't wear them anymore because they were high stiletto Manola Blonix in gold, but they were pretty on yeah. point again from t- early 2000 <laughs> well, to now 2024. So, but yeah. I wouldn't have worn them again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> may- maybe they'll turn up. Maybe they'll turn up at the next prom. <laughs> <laughs> on somebody but, else but isn't that interesting like yeah. 20 years later yeah, that, love it yeah it's um no i know i i love it and that's and i i think i told you this um the other day i really believe in supporting small mm-hmm. very small brands too because i think that that designer is no less important than an artist that you would hang on the wall or a sculptor mm-hmm. who would have a piece on your, whatever that is. Um, they're incredible creatives. They take so much risk. And I, I love being part of their journey. And speaking of creatives, you told me about a really interesting uh, dinner party or cocktail party. Oh, you oh, with right. Creatives yeah. share with- well, it was part of my new circle of friends that have mm-hmm. materialized since I started doing this. So there were about nine of them and they're all, in a creative space Mm -hmm. of some sort, mainly um, fashion or jewelry or however. And none of them speak English as a first language. So I invited them for dinner last September and we had the best time. Literally, we're sitting around my dining room table and I said, you guys, you just don't understand. You bring me so much joy. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something about having friendships with particularly women who are from other countries where your friendship just picks up now Mm-hmm. And um, they, it, there's, there's no like reminding you of silly things you did in college, <laughs> you know, any of that. And um, so then I thought, okay, I'm going to do this again. So in January, I invited them, but I said you have to bring a, at least one friend who's also in the creative space, and they can be an artist, a gallerist, an art curator, another wh- whoever, just someone who's. Not a lawyer, a doctor, a cat, none, none, none of that. Mm-hmm. Just create. And Danae, we had about 20, mm-hmm. at least 20 of us. Mm-hmm. And I was a little, I, I'm all into the five senses of when you have people over, which is why when you walked in, I didn't have the music on yet. It was like completely um, off kilter. But so I was worried before they arrived for like a week or two. What kind of music am I going to play? Oh, yes. Because that sets the tone. Uh-huh. But they, and so I picked something. And I don't remember what it is now. It didn't matter. It did not matter because they all came together. And you all have that nine foot concrete island. Mm-hmm. There was so much chatter at a very high volume in about six different languages that you could not hear the music. <laughs> And again, I just thought, you know what? This is a whole part of Mm -hmm. Houston that I didn't know about before. Mm -hmm. Because I was trapped in, not trapped, but living this small bubble, Mm -hmm. um, raising children and just involved in neighborhood schools, et cetera. And there's so much here in Houston on the international scene, all these incredibly brilliant, creative people and minds that... I feel like I'm just starting to tap into. And share with us about your uh, round top retreat because that was really oh, inspiring too. That was so much fun. I'd heard about it and I, I, I need, so I'm going to send you that information. Mm-hmm. Um, and I took the plunge and I paid the $1,800 or so fee to go. It was two weeks ago. It was called the Southern Summit. Some, some, something like that i'll i'll give you the correct name i've forgotten now but um it was female entrepreneurs in the creative space who stretch from about texas to florida 
So they're all from the South. And today it was just so rewarding to be around all these women who are, they maybe they're at the beginning stage of mm-hmm. their business venture or they're well established, have sold multiple times, et cetera. But at the end of the day, we're all just females mm-hmm. with a whole lot in common and in there to raise, lift all boats. Mm-hmm. And there was just this incredible spirit there and some really special friendships that were made that have already borne fruit. And so I highly recommend, you know, if you have the opportunity and to be a part of a conference of like men, like-minded women for whatever space you're in, it, it will fill your cup. I was um, able to go to the Forbes Women Summit. Yes. And then I just got back from a summit at the UN. Wow. To help Incredible. women, um, specifically in India and Thailand, uh, create pathways for um, careers right. and for their education. And it truly, um, it all changes me. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I've mentioned to you, I feel like I'm going through a metamorphosis. Right, where, right. Um, and I think that that's part of it is with Bella going off to school. Yep. What does yep. my life look like? Sure. How does our business evolve? Right. And um, it's really magical. It's scary at mm-hmm, times. Mm-hmm. It's, there's a lot of shifts as I feel like as we reflect a lot and we grow it's hard to grow in the same way mm-hmm. as we do with our friends we've known a long right. time or people right. we've been connected with. Um, and it's interesting because Rob and I love to come together, but he loves to fish and hunt. And I think, well, what am I going to be doing when right. he's fishing and hunting? And I feel like it's mm-hmm. going to these conferences mm-hmm. and meeting these creatives mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. really learning more about what different people are doing. And I, I mean, I do love to purchase and buy pieces from, but I, I it's more about the learning yep. and the understanding right. and that growth of looking at things in a different artistic way. Completely. And I think that that's the gift of being the age we are. Yes. And that freedom to feel like you can even define that more mm-hmm, and grow mm-hmm. into that more. Mm-hmm. And it, it's... It's a really exciting space, but there, there's definitely some anxiety part of it because there will be other lanes in your life that will change mm-hmm. as a result. Um, but ultimately, it's it's all good. Well, my the best compliment I ever received in life mm-hmm. about fashion was from my godchild, mm-hmm. and I. Um, she overcame pediatric cancer. She had T-cell lymphoma when she wow. was six, and I went a lot to visit her, and um, and, as, and now she is 17 and healthy and fabulous, but she told her mom, like eight or 10, maybe eight years ago, Aunt Danae looks like she's always dressed for a party. Yes. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's the best compliment ever. Right. It's because I try to have fun, but then I've also had friends say, are you going to be that crazy woman with the pink coat on when you're old? I'm like, yeah, yes. I'm not even that old. And I am the crazy <laughs> yes. lady with Amen. the pink coat on already. Amen. Amen. No, I agree. <laughs> well, we talked about, and this is what I love. Um, this is what I do for myself. Uh-huh. And what I do when I work with women is, okay, you know what? You're going to look like a million dollars without spending it. Yes. Okay. We can get a lot of bang Mm -hmm. for fewer bucks than you think in your closet. And if you decide to make some strategic acquisitions, um, we're going to have fun with this. And I tell you what, you know, who really appreciates, um, the work that I do are the husbands. Yes. <laughs> and no, I think it's not even necessarily the way a woman looks. I think they like the way we feel and when yes. we look different. And I... Danae, it's 100% true. Absolutely, and right? And that's one we of my... We strut different. Truly. We walk different. Yeah. And that is one of the strategies that Danette and I talk about a lot, is when you have your worst day, dress for your best day. Amen. And turn that stuff around. Amen. Amen. A friend of mine, he was... I, <laughs> mentor and the she's in Fort Worth and it's been, uh-huh. she's literally been 
doing this job of styling for women mm -hmm. in Texas for about 50 years. Oh, wow. She is the grand dame of this space. And she said, at least, you know, with her Beaumont, Texas twang, she said, My mom's from Beaumont. Oh, she I is? Oh, she good probably, people. So she yes. probably knows um, Jill Fortney. But um, she said, you know, one of my clients told me, who was elderly, you know, uh -huh. senior, and she said, Jill, I don't know when my last day is going to be, so I want to be dressed great every day. Aww. You know, well, like, and I always, we talk, I talk about this with women I work with and they'll say, well, I'm, I'm, I have that for a special occasion. Yes. It's like, I'm saving that for a special occasion. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, can today be special? I love that. Like, why can't you wear your Chanel velvet bag today mm -hmm. instead of waiting four weeks from now for a black tie party? Yes. Well, I went to run errands with Rob on Saturday yeah. and it was 90 degrees, but yeah. I pulled out my um, faux fur Chanel of flat bag of course. <laughs> to, of course. to the uh, Verizon store to get his, and the girl across I from me it. says, I noticed your necklace. Are yeah. you the vintage Contessa? Yeah. I was like, I yes. am the vintage Contessa. Of course, of course. I'm like, did you, I'm thinking it might have been the fur bag when it's 90 degrees outside. You okay. were looking at how crazy the lady no, was. I tell you what, you know what? What You're just being yourself. <laughs> That you you are not there is nothing artificial or superficial <laughs> about you. You're just being yourself. And I tell you what, I have friendships now as a result of somebody saying, "Gosh, you look so nice today." I'm like, "Oh, my name's Elise." Exactly. And and we're friends because exactly. they're like truly a friend yes. now. And so I'm just a huge. It's fan a conversation of that. that opens up deeper connections. Truly, truly, mm -hmm. truly. And you know, and we were. Um, I think I mentioned this the other day with you or with someone else is, you know, accessories, mm -hmm. I think are so key because you know what accessories are? Mm -hmm. Conversation starters. Absolutely. Just like your necklace mm -hmm. that you had on and, and the woman across the way said, oh, no, oh, no. then she was confirmed like, oh, I know that. <laughs> but, you know, whatever that accessory is, mm -hmm. that is such, it, and you can use this when you're at a dinner party, like, oh, what a pretty necklace. To somebody you don't know or somebody you're supposed to As know. It's a conversation. It's a piece. conversation and it starter. Opens up it opens up interactions and, it, and the story they behind relax. it. Yes. Yeah. It, there's a story typically behind there's a story a story behind every purchase, which is another reason why I love working with women in their closets with mm -hmm. things that they already own, because I hear the stories. Yes. There's no story if I go buy it for you. Exactly. There's no story there. So and I'm too old to run errands. I have a hard enough time doing my own. So, um, but I love here. Oh, you know, we bought this when we were on a trip to Italy for our 20th wedding anniversary. I'm like, oh, that's so exciting. Let's wear it tomorrow. Exactly. You know, so I, and, and when I was working with um, the estate in Fort Worth, one of the fur wraps, I said to uh, the daughter, I said, you know, Shelly, wh wh I know I know you don't think you're going to wear this often, but will you take it and wear it on occasion and just think of it as your mom Aww. has her arms around you right now? That's beautiful. Um, so I, I, I'm all about the story. Yes. And I think that's where authenticity comes when you dress mm -hmm. and you can tell the story behind what you're wearing mm -hmm. versus just being a full-on constant consumer that's just churning and or never wearing what you have because there's just so much quantity um so helping women do some i call it curating yeah because i think editing sounds kind of curating is a little more elevated and that's mm -hmm. what we're doing you have whether your pieces come from zara mm -hmm. or they came from you know river oaks shopping district mm -hmm. it doesn't matter to me uh, cause I've got a little bit of both and, um, is curated so that mm -hmm. everything in there are things that you look forward to seeing because mm -hmm. if they're not out, yes. there's nothing that will kill your self-esteem quicker than holding on to low waisted jeans from when you were in Ugh, your thirties. Putting those on and not yeah, feeling I mean, your stop, best. Go exactly. bye. It's time for high waisted jeans. Now we're, we're exactly. in our fifties. Um, or, 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 you know, whatever, or, 
you know, a piece that just brings back a bad memory. Or it's a piece you kind of regret buying, but it's harder to let it go because you paid too much for it. Mm -hmm. Those are the pieces that usually the women will say, will you just give me permission to let it go? Like, let it go. Yes. It's going to be okay. And Resell it. Exactly. Resell it. The other thing is, um, I'll do a shameless pitch for the Salvation Army. I'm oh, working on gathering yes. pieces and yeah, yeah, we have our big fashion show. Okay, I'm going to keep that in, in mind. April. Um, so when you're cur- going through yeah. and curating closets okay. and people have pieces Perfect. to move on, they can move it on and know Get that it. they're helping Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people in our community Perfect. or relief okay. care or different things like that. Perfect. In fact, um, so uh, it's... I think, and the pieces I found there, I think right. you might want to come to the luncheon with us this year. It's truly I want to an come. incredible. I know. I've never been. I'm dying to go. An incredible find. Count in fact, in. Um, Bella said um, she wants to go as her birthday gift this year. Oh. <laughs> she wants to wait in line because she loved the pieces I found so much. Oh, I'm much. sure. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm sure. Well, it has been such a treat to have you. Thank I you, loved Danae. all your stories. Thank and I you. feel so connected to you. Truly. And, um, this is such an honor. I just want you to know I'm really honored. Thank you. Well, uh, we are so honored to have you, Elise. Elise. Canali. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, if people want to reach you, it's Paris Prep, Prep. Mm-hmm. on P-R-E-P, Instagram. Which is phonetically spelled and pronounced. I it's love just it. just wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so thank you. Keep living the authentic life, and Perfect. we'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye. Bye.